Hey, hey there, Libra. This is Joy with Joy of the World, here to take an intuitive peek into the energies going on around you. Subscribers and friends, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, be sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell. They'll notify you anytime I post new videos. Also, if you find you like the content we provide here at Joy of the World, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, like, and share. Okay, so sitting here tuning in to you guys, Libra, there's already this kind of heady feeling where normally it was very piercing and, and I would say shrill, but not of sound, but of energy. It was like this um, hyper clarity and not a good kind, like a blinding kind. It's now warming and, and settling and broadening, which is fantastic because um, I feel like you'll get a clearer perspective of what's going on in your world and how you navigate through. You guys tend to be psychic in a different type of way, um, leading forth for, through the heart, watching how things play out. Um, kind of clairsentient, that type of energy. So what you're showing me through the, the cuts and splits of the deck is you basically said, it's all gonna work out just you see, not just you wait and see. I was like, that's interesting. You're like, no, we drop in that word, just you see. So that would make me feel like from one of these cards to begin to perceive the unseeable right now, it's going to be in the little things. It's going to, you're telling me is it doesn't seem like much um, and it doesn't seem to really have any place or part in this more domestic type things, daily type things, routines, rituals, that type of thing. Maybe even brushing your teeth, watching where your mind wanders, that, that kind of stuff. But what I got as I began to meditate and tune into you guys before we started is that you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Not the whole part, but like out of sync with yourself. It's, it's so much of a pressing and a leaning for it in the action side, almost like trying to make it happen that you could fall, tip over, go headlong. It actually it casts a shadow on you and um, it's reducing your visibility and also your radiance, your glory. You're made to be beautiful. You're made to be aligned. You're made to walk forward in your full self, in your knowingness, to wait for the cue. Kind of like, you know, famous people or um, I see it like when people arrive at a ball that your name's on the list, your name's called out for your entrance. So you're talking about waiting until your name is called to make your entrance. Um, Y'all are having a divine shift. That is obvious. So let's begin to move into the energies that are here, and then we're going to clarify it out with some, we'll call it the naked truth. It's the sexual magic tarot. So although I can't show you all the images, I'm, I'm wanting to get into the skinny of things, the nothing hidden type energy for you guys this week, because y'all were showing me there's some sort of like sifting going on and needing to know the truth of what to weed out. So we often think of like, Spring cleaning is a time, but fall is also a time for cleansing and filtering, like especially of the blood. If you think of like milk thistle and things like that, it's also a strong emerging time of butterflies. So really being able to um, leave behind gluttony, and gluttony isn't always a food, y'all. It's it's an overconsumption of anything that can be burdensome or or driven by like a gnawing in your um, your lower chakras kind of like you were showing me the the physical action to push to press forward to make it happen and really it's just being in sync with the rhythms and the times of the season and this is now season is what you're telling me as i'm listening to you guys begin to speak um you're definitely calling for an angelarium so let's go ahead and jump off with that let's get this as your head your guide your um crown of your spread here there we are okay Let's see who came in for you. So, all right. Here it is. I'm looking at the back of the card, and you're like, ka -ching. There it is. They've been very vocal about this, and I can't say that explicitly that's what the design on the back of the card means, but what it means to me, what it evokes in me, is the teaching that they've been um, bringing together aligning now it's coming together like that it's uh like we're zipping up getting ready for this new era that's being ushered in this period of air that lasts about 200 years and 
um, the shifts start around the 80s, but definitely the tearing of the fabric has been occurring since about 2007 and 8. Um, so that very much feeling out of sync. So, okay, so that's what you're showing me here. That leaning forward, that pressing in, that action is like, if I don't choose it, I'm going to die. Not, I'm going to, I'm going to die. If I don't choose it, I'm going to die. Oh, we ought to make a loop of that, y'all. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. That's what you're doing. I can hear it now. It's looping. It's looping. Okay, it's looping. So how do we break that loop? Well, first of all, we're just unzipping it. And you put us in the framework of saying this is now time. So you've already established that. So let's just go ahead and get in the harmonics of that. It's um, very sunny, yellow type energy. And not necessarily deep yellow. So it's really clear, pure, radiant light coming along from like the center of your being, your center star, your soul star. Okay. So tuning in with that, we're going to take the look in here. But that alignment has to do with the, the four eyes that they talk about, our intelligence, our intuition, our instinct, and our intimacy. And intimacy isn't just sexuality because you can have people, even though it's your lower chakra, get tracked in and plugged in down there without ever having sexual contact. Somebody that you're not even attracted to. Maybe somebody that is a BFF or seemed to have been... Um, but getting, uh, that's where there's been underhandedness and things like that can get um, junked up on that tract. And they want us to get it all back in alignment, meaning ours on the page of mine, the M-I-N-E in -E me, having your meanness all together aligned. Okay, so that's what, before we even look at the angel on this card, you are really pulling strongly forward. You're almost saying, stitch me back up like you've just had surgery and you're ready to heal. I am. <laughs> that's tough. Woo. That's fantastic. Talk about a transformation, y'all. You're ready to heal. You're ready to move forward. That's some difficulty that you've been through. Okay. Some removing of some foreign energies and that could have been incredibly painful. Um, for some of you, it's trying to get back the pieces of yourself that you lost and others of you, you're like, I can live without it. Um, it's like an amputee. Um, so th there's, there's a different pockets of groups going on here today, apparently as to what it is, but it's all of one movement, one voice, one mind. And that is to be aligned in your eyes so that you can move forward. Okay. So let's take a look at the angel that you've brought in here. I can't. Okay, so you're definitely in control because I'm not allowed to flow. You're like saying, no, stop, look at this. And so it's almost like um, editing, like an editor. The, the writer flows and it flows all out and then they go back and look again and begin to thin it out. But this is like full stop, hone in on this bracket. So that's very editorial type energy. Uh, so before we even go into who it is, look at the orb above the head here. Okay. It's almost a reiteration of what you hold in your hand. Can you see that? Like this is a, this is a flame having to do with, um, I would say consumption of earth energy, which is good, but it's uh, communion with earth energy. But this is divine energy here. This is synergy is what you're saying. This is what you're wanting to focus in on. So we may be coming back and forth to this card. I'm simply here uh, to offer you my perspective in the energy work that we need to go along. Okay, so we're working on your, your spirit body right here, that synergy of your divine connection. So let's get a couple of cards on that. We're going to get a couple of room cards to see what this divine synergy is about that you're wanting to take a, a, a closer look at. There they are. And then I feel like I need a, a cosmic tarot for this as well. Two. Lots of pairing coming out. Okay. Which is perfect to me. Um, my angels, I call them, my uh, lovers because they're all full of love. They come together in pairs. I didn't even know it. It took a while. I was dealing with them all, and they're always talking to them in twos, and they're like, do you see what's going on? And this is the first time I've talked about it here. 
So we're talking about pairing up. Do you see what's going on? So they're coming out in pairs, coming out in pairs, coming out in pairs. We'll see about you. We'll see about you there. Um, so our Rune cards are about cooperation is essential for life. Celebrate things are looking up. You see that? And this, I love, it's like hand-holding. It is um, all facets of love. It's staying in step with yourself and with those around you, synergizing. Remember, we're talking about the synergistic divine energy here. And they're saying what needs to happen is, okay, that third piece, that third going on, it makes perfect sense. Because where you were showing me for so long in order to survive since 2007 and eight that you were getting ahead of yourself energetically, like physical energy of having to make things happen. Because even if you had backed up, you don't necessarily see that there would have been alignment because you're so, um, you're saying so uh, catalyzed by this shift into, you're saying the 200 degrees of air. Okay, okay, okay Libra, into those 200 degrees of air. But they said what's going to bring you to balance here is celebration. Celebration is going to become that central channel. Okay. Which is going to cause this. Okay. Okay. You're making perfect sense. You're making perfect sense. Hold on. Let it just move. Whoa. Because you got really excited. Um, whose was that in? Was that in Virgo? It was either in the Virgo or the Leo reading. I'm, I'm thinking it was Virgo. It was definitely Virgo. And it was talking about the IC, about our North Star. And what you just showed me here, I've just got to get that out of the way. Hello. Um, what you showed me there in that card is that taking it and channeling it up through the center is how you're going to turn your world right again. Getting up, getting your MC and your IC on the same page of the communication, of the connection. Um, it's like a pump, but you're, I'm, I'm, y'all, I'm having to listen to you because you're talking a lot. A good communicators. But you're saying it's a storehouse. And it's a storehouse of information, but you almost have to pump it up from the lower rounds, from the lower regions. You had hidden it to protect yourself. And you had hidden it from sight because some of you, you were involved with people, um, definitely people that you dated. Some of you, it was a family predator, someone in the family that lived vicariously through you. And vicariously, we could think of through the eyes, but remember, you're clear, it's going through your feelings, through your energy, through your being. And so they were living through your being, often taking what they wanted to do and having you do it. Instead of controlling themselves, they were controlling you. So you were having to hide it from sight. Now you're wanting to talk. You're saying you're on point. You're totally on point. Can you see this? Because you're, you were so um, divine of such a high order. And, and that's not demeaning anyone else. It just like Just like the color spectrum, there are those that... Are, are higher than others and it higher in this case doesn't mean better it's just a, um, a term in order to relate to communicate but you were so of a, a skill set spiritually that you could levitate at birth you could reduce friction and force in order to what is that called um, you're holding it from me for the moment hang on telepathy okay lots of telepathy and not just telecommunication, telepathy. And this is especially those of you, you were born before the um, technology age, this telecommunication age of cell phones and Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. You were the energy that helped bring it in, which is fantastic. I see why you're rising it up. It makes perfect sense now. You're, you're, so what we're getting to here is everything happens for a divine reason. I'm speaking to your soul and the suffering that has occurred there. Um, the, the rift that occurred there that has caused you difficulty and struggle and caused you to leave yourself for a while. Um, this needed to come up and there are those of you that chose to be the conduit for that during this lifetime, during this season. So um, I pray the debt of what you endured to, just wash off of you right now. 
any fracture or fissure be totally sealed and healed right now, like automatically, even without the stitches that they just dissolve right now. And that um, there not even be a remnant, a mark, a, a smell, a, a recollection, nothing that you proceed forward now into the synergy of where that uh, telepathy of yours, that communication, that ability, your IC and your MC fully draw up into the synergy here and be a benefit to you, which is why you are making it that warming sound, tone, color. It's um, for those of you I'm, I'm hearing like uh, smoky quartz and amber, definitely amber for sure. Um, it'd have to be the right smoky quartz, like not just the right type, but meaning the right one. When you look at it, they're as individual as people are, and they have different personalities, different voices, different vibrations of that type of thing. So if you're someone who are uh, um, who is drawn to crystals or um, who already has a strong relationship to them, those are ones to be working with on this energy right now. And you're telling me, like with your left eye, you're wanting to look on to the future, okay, which is very much what you're doing here. Having an eye for the future in order to bring forth this will consciousness, not just in yourself, but in our world. And I'll tell you what you're saying is it's by example. You're leading into those exchange of energies, okay? So you're wanting to stir the energy where... Um, leave it to you to totally distract from this message here that you're wanting to begin to move together these these objects, these beings, these these bodies, these people, you souls um, who've who've done this, who've been through this, not to take time to uh, go over that past, to talk about that, but to be present in this this very moment. The rising of the cosmic sun is what you're talking about. The 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 new day dawns, and this isn't like 24 hour day. This isn't like, uh, you know, after the new moon, here comes the brand new day. No, it's none of that. You're talking about the new era, the 200 years. You're right on track to lead us in there. And to lead us in there in balance is what you're showing me, that, that cosmic balance. You'll hear me often talk about the four angles here. The MC and the IC, okay, which is this pole. And then we have our AC and our D ASC and DSC, our ascendant and descendant. And that's on this plane. So it's bringing in that GPS point, honing it in, you're saying. And it should be like a crosshair. Right here is what you're telling me. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that wisdom, Libra. So now you're ready to talk about who this is on the card. Um, it's Faneuil, the angel of truth. The ancient trees, the ancient trees of knowledge is what you're awakening and bringing in. The roots, the living roots, the above ground roots. It's not even any longer about the fruits. It's all about the roots is what you're saying. It's all about bringing in the roots. That's how we bring the IC and the MC to they synergize and it harmonizes over the seat of the soul and begins the divine communication. Okay, I guess I need some, something to shift. That is, uh, That's a very lucid energy, which is common if you're you're relaxed and laying back or laying down because it, it carries a bit of weightiness along with the ethereal. So if you see me swooning, that's why, because my kidneys are going, we want to plug into the earth. We want to make contact to the earth because of how all this is passing through. Um, so just me speaking to you for a moment, you might want to go back and listen to that first portion laying down and then you might be able to rise up yeah okay that's becoming much clearer and just let it infuse and permeate because that's how you're telling me that the crosshairs will penetrate through the seat of the soul okay Woo! now back to earth um yeah so here coming in as a pair, we have the Princess of Wands and the Three of Cups. 
And this is the same person, even though it's fire and water. That's the same potential. And then both the extreme knowingness along with the willingness to merge and to, you're saying blend, but I know it's not losing oneself. It's not giving oneself up. It is uh, propagating. Um, so you're taking me in when you make bread. So long ago before stores existed and people had to grow their own yeast, <laughs> you guys in the bread, what is this? You would um, take the flour and water, right? If you watched last week's, my friend, how do you get yeast? From air. And then you just cover it loosely with a cloth or put a paper towel over the top and put a rubber band around it. And the yeast will make its way down into there. So then you make a loaf of bread from that, a, a lump of dough, should we say. After that has had time to propagate, to increase the culture, that sort of thing, you use it to make a loaf of bread. So here you have that lump of dough that you've now made from the propagated yeast that you had. And say it's, you know, a one half such pound ball of dough, you pinch off just a little smaller than a fist size amount and you set that back into that jar and then you make your bread out of what remains. So the lump, this all will all make sense of what you're talking about in the blending here, okay? That lump, that piece, that portion that you pulled off to contribute to the coming day, you then add some flour and some water to, which is a new source of food, okay? So that it can grow and increase even more to be sufficient to the day, okay? The coming day. Leave it to y'all to keep doing all this. Man, I'm on a cosmic bus ride. My, my kids used to call me the uh, magic school bus lady. And this time, the, the tides have been turned. I might be the magic school bus lady, but I'm in the seat riding along as a student, not as the driver. <laughs> this, is, this is a trip. So anyways, this is how you begin to dance through life. It's knowing the rhythms of life, of enjoying today, and knowing how to, to set seed for the coming day, how to root in for the coming day, how to synergize, how to truly create, how to be the post and the beams of the scale, as well as you're calling them the bowls, the eddies. The eddies, so you're, you're moving energy. Eddies are these vortex energies that are in rivers. And there's water flow in this. You're talking about how to get this flow to move out into the hands, into the action, into our world without losing oneself, without um, watering yourself down, how to culture yourself and cultivate yourself for the coming day. Okay. And that's where this intensity is uh, coming into play you're you're packed and ready to go and that doesn't necessarily mean like you gotta get up and go somewhere this is your energy being willing to move in this in agreement with this and like you're saying you're you're up for the job up for the the calling okay it's almost like this is your energy itself the blood in your veins itself the um the heartbeat itself I'm just going with y'all and so that's why they want you to start to celebrate not to press in to do any of that begin to celebrate and that's going to be that pump action so in your blood in your veins is a nature to celebrate to enjoy life no longer having to do that precarious juxtaposition of working energies in order to gain wisdom and insight and understanding you will begin to understand yourself, yet not lose yourself, all at the same time through this divine witness that you've just given us. So with witness, we're getting another, we're getting another. Witness is the power of two, okay? Because see, there always has to be that testimony, right, when there's a court case. So the witness, the power of the two, which is why y'all are often drawn to being in love relationships, having that strong connection, also needing a BFF, and your, your best case scenario would be not your BFF being your friends with uh, FWB, not your friends with benefits, but your BFF, your best friend being your mate as well. 
okay? You need to know that, Libra. And to hear it from another mouth. So the witness coming along with Faneuil now is Keter, the crown, spirituality. Interesting. This is wild. So I'll give you a peek. As the coming together. And as you can see here in form, also being reiterated in spirit. And that's what you were saying here. In form, that, that earth, remember that consumption? It doesn't mean like wasting, using up. It meant communing with, sharing the energies with your intent, who you are with the earth resources that were given, the connections, the humanity, all that that were given. Well, it's same here. Here's the earth form being reiterated in the spirit form, where here is that spiritual divine connection. Now the irony, I will tell y'all now because I see it here. See the hands together. We can call that prayer. That's also meditation. That is connection to the divine self. Um, I take time to, to meditate, to tune in, to listen, what, whatever. To, should I say to flip to your channel, okay? Because there's always information coming and going and assimilating around all of us. But I, I was tuning into your channel and right before I began, they told me, they said, put your hands together to finish. And I did. This is exactly what I did. That's wild. Um, that's not common for me. Although I know it's incredibly powerful. Why I don't practice it, I don't know. You could ask me, but I cannot answer you that. Why do we hold out on some of the best parts of ourselves? I don't know. But it's that moment that the connection is made. And then you said to bring in the orb of energy. Oh, okay. So that's exactly what happened here. You're telling me it activates the, the breasts, the, um, the cycles of life, the moon, the lunar, the cancer. Okay. Okay. Um, Cancerian heart. So it's, it's that pivotal point where it becomes, you're going there again. Oh my gosh, you're getting, where it becomes summer. Okay. A lot of swoon going on here, and that's where you're hung up, okay? There, there's a hanger here. That's where you're hung up. That's where you're seeking to connect. And the unique thing is, is I could say we could bend time, but all you do when you come together like this is, is you remove time. Actually, you commune time. You all time. So in that moment, it's a very healing posture is what you're telling me, that you can begin to write Time, R I G H T, time. And I'm sure W R I T E um, homonyms are that way for a reason. So you're able to balance yourself from what has been done as to well as what should have been done as to now. Okay. What you wish had happened, what really did happen as to now. Okay, so where Faneuil was more working, this energy, Keter is working the ascending and descending, which makes sense. So, okay, so that would be like the balance of Cancer would be Capricorn. Anyways, um, let's move on forward now. We're going to step into the first card that came out, and that's number 48, poised on a pedestal, looking up. More of that infinite energy moving through and this is that's what this is talking about the infinite the um well this one as well it's reiterating okay in the infinite is the finite how you're talking about those little dailies those little mundanes the routines the things that don't really seem to have a face a relevance a type of importance right now um, is because you're, you're pushing, pushing head, like scoping out, trying to look for something big, but up so close, you couldn't get it. And so when they told you to stop, uh, stop, collaborate, and listen, that's what you're doing. You're like, stop, collabor collaborate, and listen. And it then begins to come into the proper balance between um, how far out you need to see with where your focus lens is. Okay, um, and that brings in that balance, that ability. So when that comes there to the seat of the soul, then you begin to see with the eyes of your soul. And that's when the dancer awakens. The dancer, look here. I don't know if you can see. Ballerina shoes, she's the dancer there. Same here. Can you see that? 
Okay, and that's what you're telling me fills these cups. Fills the golden cups. Dancing, which of course is why they were talking about celebrate. You can get jiggy up in your house all by yourself and you got some crazy little swing and you feel too shy to do it out publicly. But really it's about that dancing of the soul. They're showing me that all the bits like, like this, it's going on here, all this that glitters. That's what the glitter is. That's the shine is this is more shine like phosphorescence, but is golden colored that as it begins to be struck and touched and uh, stroked and caressed and moved, it begins to emit light, begins to shine, that that is the radiance because this is within the belly. It's within the depths of our self that light doesn't shine there. But when it is, when it makes contact, that that, emits the light, the phosphorescence, and phosphorus is energy, okay? It's quick and short-lived. You're saying the measure of a day. Remember the measure of a day, getting it into that scope like the, the dough of knowing what to eat today and what to sow to tomorrow. So you're also doing dual speak about investment here, financial investment, so that uh, you don't play yourself for the fool for your money anymore, giving so much more out to others because others, I'm seeing that they work you quite a bit and that sometimes that puts you in energy of feeling like you have to work others to get what you want. It's a duality of the mind. It doesn't matter which came first, the chicken or the egg in that case. The energy came together. So either you're drawn towards people who have that type of energy and you don't realize that being a scale, being a balance, being a mirror, that you act it out through yourself. And then you think that's the way you have to get it, realizing, not realizing that that's not even your own mindset. That that projection is coming in through you and you're, you're acting it out like a muse. But that's not amusing, is it? You're wanting to gain con permission and control of your life here is very clear. Very clear. So let's get, um, well, that's obvious. <laughs> let's get the two cards that wouldn't be picked up. Um, 49 and 39, Angel of Love and Fifth shark Chakra, Archangel Gabriel. Wow. Do you recognize something here? Do you recognize that? Look. So that you're able to carry your truth, to live your truth. Remember we were talking about that projection energy that you were just showing me, that um, where your abundance and your wealth and your finances and your good heart and beauty and all those things are, that you've, you've been tricked out of them over and over again, so then you kind of play that energy on others. So what happens here has to happen there. And that has just cut you sick, nauseated. That's the best way to say, okay, so you're saying disgusted. Um, and that's why you start off with wanting to correct your energy. So we already did the whole energy shift. And now you're having us dive into the back story of what was going on. Earth-minded, earth-eye, earth experience. <coughs> Excuse me, that sort of thing going on there. And all for the sake of love. But your love should be pure, it should be innocent, it should be sincere. And that's why you were telling me to tell you that your lover and your best friend, your mate and your best friend should be the same person and not a friends with benefits. That's why often you could be drawn to that because you feel so closely bonded to a friend that you want to carry it that way. But how about you make the full commitment? The full commitment. Okay. So just set your mind that your friend has to be of such excellent quality that there isn't that usurping, that trickery, that disempowerment going on, that um, power struggle going on. And same with your mate. That your mate is someone that you could tell everything to and that they tell you everything. Not that you suppose they are and you believe they are, but that it's real. That it's real. Okay, and right now Gabriel is, man, he is, I love it because the horn is down his hand, but he is blasting that horn right now and it's lighting you up like gold because Libra, you are gold. You are golden. Okay, and that golden has to be with truth and it has to be about you and about others and about the significance of honest, sincere, genuine communication because that communication leads to communion and you're showing me this. 
Someone that you would feel good walking along, holding hands and talking to. That is a form of intimacy, which is why the, the four eyes was coming up. That is someone that you feel is safe as, as, um, as sexually charged, as sensually um, explored here as you do here. Okay? That's what Gabriel has come in to say. And that wakes up your creativity. Then that fosters your security. Okay? And that is a hallmark and a, and a symbol. And you're saying in a symptom that you will know because you'll know them by their roots. Okay? Because people can, they, they be taping all sorts of fruit all over them. People, um, what's that called? Getting some like fruit, fruit plastic surgery going on on their trees or whatever to show a different fruit than what their roots really are. Um, but that's how you'll know. You were talking about those, those little things. You'll pick it up in the little things. The kindness and how they treat others around you. How they treat others around you. Like if you go out to eat, how did they talk to uh, your waiter, your server? How did they tip them? How did they uh, interact with the checker at the grocery store? Um, how do they interact with your siblings? That type of thing. That's where their character is being shown. Okay. How do they react during a difficult day or a difficult situation? Do they come to you and pour their heart out and allow you to offer them comfort, whether it's just, you know, a hug or whether it's a listening ear or whether it's a kind word? Are they receptive to your energy? Okay. I didn't know this was a date and coach session. Y'all are good coaches though, because I don't know a whole lot about it, but I sure appreciate what you're what you're teaching us here today. That that's how you begin to know. That's how you pick up on it, and that's how you see that someone is worthy of your friendship and and your intimacy, okay? Because remember, both can touch this realm. It doesn't have to be a sexual connection to go there, an intimate connection touches there, all right? And that's where your treasury is. So going from the glittering and wanting to get um, pure perspective on what that was like that you've just explained to us, it, now under it comes 44, the thinker. And you're saying that's a lot to think about. What level do I want to live at? And okay, it's really making my nose itch. So the dancer has shown up again, but now you're in a time of reflection different energies so you're either up about it or you're down about it okay and here it's hopeful because you got the pink of the high heart going on and here you're saying it's a little bit more realistic almost like I hear you asking is that really possible there's no one that will ever live up to my expectations no one I could totally trust well yes you can because you're telling me you it all starts with you building that trust with yourself and that comes from what you were telling us here of if you find yourself acting out like you you have to do things to others in order to get from them in whatever way a compliment um an invite to to spend the night and um, sharing of goods uh friendliness uh laughter whatever it is if you feel like you're having to work for it that's already showing a bit of being out of balance and you're saying with yourself um that check the energies around you. I mean, because we are ultimately all responsible for who and what we are, but what you're showing me here in this instance is often because you're an open receiver, you didn't realize that you were picking up on the energies of those around you and acting them out through your own body as if they were your own. So the first thing you do is a reality check in the energy of people going on around you and begin to notice those things. Are they just a constant nagger and complainer? Do they always have to, you know, if they bring up a friend and start out talking about a good story and then they have to just like diminish that person just with a little jab, a little stab, a little needle pinprick type of thing. Um, do they complain about their parents or their relatives or their job or whatever? Uh, do they have a negative cloudy perspective? Um, do they use people? That type of a thing. So you're saying clean up the energetic space around you. Get some clarity there. Get some lightness going, both both of radiance and of, of energy, like not heavy but light. Begin to get that moving around. I can see you already looking and combing, and that's back to this energy of getting it to match and to line up. And although it's not lovely, 
to face those things about other people's, we'll call it their choices, their character of where they're at right now, um, doing it affords you the opportunity to limit exposure. It might not be somebody you totally cut out of your life, but you find that if y'all go for a jog or run together, that they tend to be more upbeat. Well, that is facilitating a change in our entire world, not just your world, but their world and our world for us all because that person is beginning to practice just that side of the energy in y'all's relationship and they'll begin to see your impact in their life as a positive one just because you generate that connection in a healthy atmosphere, right? And maybe you don't go have coffee with them because that's when they want to spin their yarn, they want to dump their junk. And it's not that you don't think they should have the right to do that, it's that when you do that with them, you get sucked down and sucked under, okay, like an undertow. And that's, that's not how the energy is supposed to work, okay? So let's move on from there. And underneath poise where you are uplifted, the hope is there, the celebration's going on. The card we have up under is number 40. We've got co-create. And look how different the energies are, okay? We've got the cheetah going on up there, and we've got an owl. Let me see what kind of owl that is. Okay, it's a barn owl, right? Both are swift and fairly silent. And together, it's that, that coming together of seemingly different things, different parts of yourself even, in order to procreate, in order to have communion, union, commonality on the same page going on here, okay? One very earthy energy, very um, commanding presence, and the other that is uh, lofty, all right? And this egg is getting quite ripe. It's ready almost to come forward. And it has its own level of where it's at. So don't feel like you have to step down from where you are and lose a bunch in order to gain. This is its own new energy coming in, a whole new experience that you get to have, a different contribution to your life, okay? So um, let's see if there's anything else. We'll get two of these and two of those. This is quite a deep dive here, Libra. Okay, there they are. And then we'll get two of the um, sexually explicit tarot magic deck. So we're going to go like this. Um, okay, so the underlying, underlying energies you have going on here that you're wanting to give to yourself as a warning and not like danger, watch out, that type of a thing, but just as like an affirmation of things that can kind of suck you in and draw you in that are some commonalities of that, you know, that bad teeter-totter energy that, that gets you um, nauseated, okay? So we have the devil. And I am a Capricorn sun, so this card doesn't ripple me any. But um, it's about that bondage, codependent type issues. Um, okay, and you're saying that's why I'm telling you to look for something that's seemingly so different from you um, because you're trying to almost, it's almost like healing yourself through others, but it only does more damage and it makes a rut in your road to reiterate what you already struggle with, just in the inverse proportion. And let me tell you, laziness and irresponsibility fall to the same ill. They fall to the same issue, the same ill, just at opposite ends of the spectrum, okay? So that codependency makes you have to put your life energy and your will towards the saving of another who's not willing to save themselves. And uh, lifeguard rule number one, when somebody's drowning, let them drown. And it's stage one drowning, meaning when they finally surrender and give up and they quit flapping their, uh, 
their saving response of flapping their arms and legs, okay? Because at that point, they'll drown you both. Trust me, I've been there. They will drown you both. So at this case, they're saying, let them drown. Because if somebody's not willing to be saved, you cannot save them. It's when there's finally that moment of surrender that any help can be given and anything can be done. So um, you might keep be playing into that role of the codependency, right? It's like um, feeling like they're a really great person. They're just a couple of flaws. And the thing is, is if you see them as flaws, then it's an issue. And it's not that those particular characteristics are flawed. It's just that you start recognizing that there's some, some differencing there, some work going on. Um, that they're saying is best left alone. Best left alone because eventually it's going to rear its ugly head. It's going to expose itself. All right. And it'll expose itself once you are the one in chains being beaten over the head. Okay. Um, then we have the Four of Cups. This is about you being drained dry, bled dry. That's what you're saying here is all M cups come up empty. <laughs> You're like, it's when the breakup or the, the ending or the disconnect occurs that it's almost like you're left with the debt, left with the bill, left with the tab, and then they've moved on to greater and better things, greener pastures, that type of thing. And um, because you've become arid and dry and browned and drained, like the water drained out, so your grass, that water has been being... Um, I'd say filtered off, but redirected to something else. And you're saying, it's been redirected to this. It's been redirected to this. So in this, in the codependency, you quit taking care of yourself altogether and begin taking care of yourself through the other person. Okay. I hope that's clear to you guys. It's ringing like a bell. Makes makes perfect sense here. So um, the two sexual magic tarots are coming in under the thinker. The warnings here is the Knight of Chalices and the King of Chalices. So there's a game that's been going on here of you're playing yourself as a little less than what you are. Um, so that way it makes it easy to find love. <laughs> Y'all keep doing these things. I'm just rolling with it. You're saying it makes it easy to find love because you don't want to take the risk and go for what you really want. Whether it's when in love or whether it's I love this kind of TV, but this one is the one that's in my price range now. And so you're like, do I want that or do I want this? You go, I want this. Because what you're wanting is now. All right? No, no deferred. Remember in the beginning you didn't, you said just you see. You didn't want the word wait because you want it now. But there is a now pleasure you can have while you're taking those couple little steps to get to exactly what I want. Totally what satisfies me. Completely what I'm here for. That type of a thing. But there, um, you're missing what is in between, which is the, the real dialogue with yourself about why you're tethering between the two. It's easier, you're saying, to dumb it down and to just have this so I can be happy now. But there is no happy in it. Happy is what we are made of. It's our physical, spiritual DNA cells. It's the cellular makeup, what we're made up of. So if you undermine or diminish yourself, you're no longer yourself. You've now gone from a state of being happy to less than happy, to dissatisfied, okay? The undermining energy. So then you'll end up paying three times over what you would have, waiting the moments Having the desire and the anticipation, excitement of, I'm, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get what I want. Using that kind of a mantra, that flow of thinking, um, you could have had it in such a short period of time. Whatever it is, you know, the, the physicality you want, the health that you want, the job, the career that you want, it's usually close within your reach. You're showing me, just like on the scales, it's an equidistance to here as it is to here. Oh, you genius. And you're just going, well, this seems easy and it seems like now, so uh, I'm just going to go there. Uh, I'm going to go there. Uh, I'm going to go there. Eventually, you go here enough, your scale gets off. It gets skewed, okay? And that's why you have to tear a scale, T-A-R-E. And you have to get it back to where it can find what its true center is again, 
okay? That's the synergy that you're wanting to bring in in these cards over here, this wisdom knowledge. So the thing is, is just as great a distance a stretch from here to here as it is here to here, meaning it's going to cost you the same. But in the long run, this one costs you way more than this one ever will because you eventually still have to get here. So going there, going there, going there, eventually you still have to jump across here and get to there, okay? So you're saying go for what you want. Even if you have to hold out a little bit, let that build, whoops, let that build the anticipation, the excitement, and the, uh, that's why you were talking about that celebration in that card. I hope y'all can remember what it is. It's like a little, like a little, uh, a little W on a stem, like a little chicken foot. Um, to get to your total happiness of knowing that you have it, you've decided, you know who you are, you know where you're going, you know your worth and your value, and you're not having to give anything up. There is no sacrifice about it is what you're saying. It's in your blood. It's in your veins. It is your right to be happy. That's what you're made of. And so to choose to be happy now, and that will just hop, skip, and a jump, bang, bada boom, bada bang, bada bing, and you'll be right there. You'll be right here at the King of Cups. Okay. <laughs> this is fantastic. I tell you, I've got to back up and get on the other side of the camera with you guys and listen to that first part while lying down <laughs> to get into that lucid area and just let the permeation of the crosshairs land on my soul seat. Okay. So, um, I think that's it for now, Libra. Thanks. Thanks for this wisdom. Thanks for this intense energy session and for just getting us into the proper alignment right off the bat and providing the understanding to back it up. Hey, his joy. I love you. We'll talk soon. Bye.